Okay, we're probably not going to be looking at this now for quite a while. Let's get back to where we was. Okay, I think this was it. We had to make some ladders before we can paint them. Uh, I'm just going to make some small talk here. Doesn't really mean anything. This is my macro lens. It's been giving me trouble lately. Normally this lens will either autofocus or it will manual focus. Now, when, when you manual focus this lens, it disengages the autofocus mechanism and then it moves a bunch of lenses inside here and I think what's happened is the grease on the inside has become hard from over time. This is one of the first lenses I bought and so it's in other words, it's uh, when I when I go to turn it, you know, right right now it's focused at its at its closest focusing distance, and quite often I'll go to turn it, and you'll notice right here, it's it's not, you know, it's not grabbing, but I have found by trying all sorts of different things to make this work, like sometimes I'll turn the ring and I'll I'll tap on the side, and but I found that if I turn it upside down. <laughs> then it'll work, okay? So th then I can I can move it back to where I need it. It's uh, it's just sort of a nuisance. It's not that I can't use this lens because because normally I have it at its closest focusing distance, which is right there, and then I just move the lens back and forth, you know, to to focus on the subject. I I don't use the autofocus anymore. Um, about the only time I really found the autofocus was good with this lens was when I was copying my slides. And I had hundreds and hundreds of slides. And I made up a special uh, uh, jig that I put, would drop the slide in and, and take the picture and it would autofocus perfectly on each slide individually. And it, it worked really, really well. But uh, since then I really haven't used the autofocus uh, feature of this. And, um, you know, I've, I've tried different settings. I, I know how to use this lens. I've had it for, for several years now. And I think that's the problem. Um, anyway, oh, and it's got uh, this VR here. That means vibration reduction. And you turn that on, and there's a little gyro goes off in there, and it sort of stabilizes the something, and it, it kind of works. But I don't need that either. So <laughs> I need it for the macro capability, which is, which is still really good at. Uh, as you would have seen in yesterday's video. Uh, okay, enough small talk. Now, if you will remember, we removed the protective plastic wrap that comes on both sides of, the, of this photo etch. We removed it where these five pieces are so that the airbrush can blow through. And I think that if I can keep the airbrush at an angle basic, basically like this, and you know and then turn this over and do the other side basically like this we shouldn't have a problem with the uh, this blowing off it's it's hard it's not, not stuck on there too good but <clears throat> as one of the viewers mentioned it it wouldn't be a big deal if we got paint on these other parts because we're going to paint them anyway but if you remember this this catwalk here I don't want to get that delicate detail filled in any more than I have to. So uh, the more the more you spray it, you know, the more you're going to fill in the detail. Uh, <clears throat> I know there's people that will argue about that, but it it only stands to reason. The more the more you spray something, the more the detail is going to fill up on you. It just it just has to. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we still need the. Uh, the uh, the uh, ladders <clears throat> uh, D3s so uh, may as well get those now okay I've already cut off the other two D3s off the other sheet and I realize I am gonna probably be getting my hand in your way here
have to be so careful not to bend that railing. Or worse yet, cut it. There we go. Now we've talked about this before. And on one side of where these are supposed to bend, like you can see where they're supposed to bend where the stair tread ends and the stringer starts, it's supposed to bend right there. But I do believe, if I can just carefully turn this over now. Yes. You can see here, I should really have the macro lens on for this, but it's there's a little bit of a, a crease right there. Well, the idea is to try and put this in the photo etch bender so that you'd be bending it towards the crease. I know it, it, would, it would seem like it would bend easier the other way, and ac actually it, it would, but then the, the part would not be formed correctly. At least... Uh, that's what I'm getting out of it. Oh, I don't want to have it too close, or otherwise it's going to bind when I fold it up. I'm sorry about my ugly fingernail there, but it's the only one I've got on that finger, so I've got to put up with it. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll put the macro lens on for the other one. loosen a little bit. Should be able to turn it over. I have to do everything very slowly because I might accidentally bend something. That's pretty close. Now we may not be able to go up all the way, but I can do the rest with my finger. Just get it started here. Get the crease going in more or less the right direction. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing now then is with a pair of tweezers, flat nose tweezers, I'll be bending each one of these treads probably at about oh, a 60 degree bend and it should look fairly normal. Now, I was going to mention something else. Um, people will be wondering why didn't I spray it when it was nice and flat like this? It would be so much easier, right? Well, well, yeah, it would be easier, but by the time I get through mucking around with my metal tweezers on these treads, I'm going to be scratching the paint off it and I'm probably going to have to repaint it again anyway, so now there's something I'd like to mention here about this photo etch bender. This was made by one of the viewers. His name is Andy Whitaker, and he's a Canadian guy. And he made this for us. Uh, oh, must be going on a year and a half or so ago now when we were doing the Bismarck build. And uh, it sure has come in handy. I, I didn't make this or buy this. It's This is custom made. There is probably no other exactly like it anywhere in the world. Similar, yes, but exactly like it? No. Now we want to take it just so that the place where we want to bend, whoops, the place that we want to bend is just visible. It'll have a tendency to, to bend there, even if it's a little too far out. Now, if, it, if, it's a, if it's a long ways out and you're just clamping down on the railings, then, of course, the railing is going to bend. Uh, 
Okay, get myself comfy here. Okay. So, Andy, your photo etch bender is still working a hundred percent. I even haven't even had the oil change in it yet. Okay, now uh, we've got two more to do. Do you want to watch them being done or? Uh... <laughs> want to watch them being done? Okay. I'll try and go a little quicker. Try my blade this way, see if I can get underneath a little easier. You know what? I bent it the wrong way. I bent it the wrong way. Well, um, all right. It's not the end of the world. You wouldn't have known unless I told you. Mind you, that's not true. I'll bet you somebody noticed. Probably somebody who's yelling at their screen, Ron, you got it the wrong way. Okay. This one's giving me trouble. It's jinxed, that's the problem. I don't think it's gonna to make too much difference. Instead of the treads bending one way, they'll bend the other. Okay, so we got that one done. Now this one here, okay, it has to be turned over as well. Maybe I'll use my finger. It's a little bit more positive, sort of. It'll be okay. Okay, we'll go back to the other way. I did remember to press record, didn't I?
Okay, looks all right. Let's take a break from the photo etch for a moment and we'll bend the stairs on them later. But we've got to get these pieces stuck down on something so we can spray them. Okay, these should still all be in position with the pins down. The, the, down, the underside is the part that's going to be going against the bulkhead. And these ones here, they actually go against the side of the hull. And I think this flat side here is down. So if we were to put them, swing around a bit here. Let's see, flat side down. Give it a little pressure on it so it sticks into the double-sided tape. Like that. I don't think that's going to blow off. This one here will do the same way. Yeah, this part right here and here, I do believe is supposed to be uh, horizontal to the, uh, or vertical rather. Maybe I should check the manual. Maybe I've got that, you know, 90 degrees out. Maybe they're supposed to go the other way. I'll just check the manual. You know what? I think I do have them the wrong way. Let's turn them around so the, the perspective is right. Like this one here is actually this one here. So let's take it off. Get it turned around here. Okay. Now this little part that we're, I'm touching right now is supposed to plug into a slot that's in the side of the hull. So that means this one should go like this. And this one here, it will go the other way. It has to, because it goes on the other side of the ship. Then we'll just move it out a little bit. Give a little bit of room here. Okay, we'll roll it over, get it so that it's this piece here is horizontal and then push it down that should stay that should stay I might have to do a little bit of fine-tuning when it comes to actually turning on the compressor yeah I do believe we've got almost everything done here well oh, there was those other two pieces okay now <clears throat> Maybe what I'll have to do is get a, another piece of double-sided tape. These pegs go into holes in the side of the ship, so that means we have to spray this side here. Now I was thinking maybe I could use these, just take the cover off and expose the tape and then put them peg side down. But now I'm sort of wondering, being that they're, you know, they're pretty good size, could they start rocking and, uh, and pull loose and the and the spray would blow them off not that they'd get lost because they just go straight into the spray booth but uh, maybe I'll think of something else here an idea kind of like these toothpicks
we're almost ready to spray. Just got to bend these things into shape now. Okay, now these ladders, I keep wanting to call them staircases, or sometimes I want to call them gangways, but they're actually, I think, called ladders on a battleship. Okay, there we go. Now, they, let, let's pretend that we wanted to go from this level up to this level up here. And, and your house, your staircase, is at about a 45 degree angle. So it's, you just bend the stairs then to, to 45 degrees. However, because on a battleship, unlike a, a cruise ship or passenger ship, the ladders are, are much, much steeper. Uh, in fact, I think the best way to have it is so that this, let's see if I can touch it here. This, this thing right here, this part right here, uh, you know, like the railing goes up and then it comes down. Okay, this little piece right here, if you have that, so it is pretty well perfectly vertical, you might say, to the deck of the ship, then you would undoubtedly have the stringer and everything else at the right angle. Now, of course, it also has to match up with what, wherever the, the, the next deck down is. Um, so it, it, this might not be might not be perfect, but I was finding that when we did the Bismarck, that if the if the if the uh, ladders were at an angle about like this, um, they they were, it was pretty pretty well right. In other words, 45 degrees would be more out this way. So that's why I was saying earlier, if I put about a 60 degree twist on the on the treads, it should be just about right. And Okay, so, so which way do they have to be? Well, you have to think, how, which way would the tread be so that you can step onto it? Now, why will this not stay bent over there? Okay, so we grab hold of it here. Maybe I should, I should be putting the macro lens on. Okay, it's hard to see, but there's a little piece of sawdust right here. And the idea is if I can manage to keep this over top of the little piece of sawdust while I'm working at it, it's not going to wander out of the field of view. There's nothing more annoying than trying to watch somebody do something and all of a sudden you see their, their shoulders or their... Maybe I should just... Uh, you can't see. In other words, you, you can't see what it is they're doing. Okay. There, that should be pretty well centered. All right, um, I can always buy another cloth. Anyway, we want to bend these now, so about 60 degrees. So I'm just going to grab hold of it here. And uh, I'm just going to do them one after the other. It's going to be a little bit uh, maybe shaky here, but let's be careful that I don't grab two at the same time. Okay, and we just give it a little twist here. That didn't want to work for some reason. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's about 60 degrees. Now, to do the next one, maybe, how can I hold this down and not have my big finger in blocking everything? Okay, now we get in here. Now if I get it just right. I'll go like that. Usually this goes better. There we go. I may not be bending them quite enough. I have to be careful I don't bend the railing while I'm holding it down. But I think it will give the illusion that the stairs are at the right angle, even though they may not be quite enough. In other words, if I was a, a crew member 
on the hood, I would be pretty unhappy having to go up and down the stairs, especially if they were slippery. Okay, now, I think we got most of them bent at a bit of an angle there. See if we can get it turned around. So we sort of look down the treads. They're pretty close. Some might be bent more one way more than the other. Now the bottom tread doesn't look... Looks like it could be just a little bit more. Okay, whoops. Gotta be careful here. Okay, I think they're pretty good now. Alright, enough poking. I'm just going to go ahead and do the other three. Okay, now if I can uh, hold something up like this nice and comfy, it generally goes a whole lot better than when I'm all hunkered down over top of a little tiny dot on my green cloth. And uh, I can generally do it a lot faster. Usually. Of course now because I'm on record it's not going to go right for me. No. Maybe I should give them just a little bit more of a bend here. Okay, we're on a roll here. Oh, by the way, uh, people have trouble pronouncing my last name. My last name is Calverly. C-A-L-V-E-R-L-E-Y. Calverly. And that's the way you say it. They, people get it all mixed up with, you know, like the cavalry, you know, the guys that ride the horses in the, in the army. And, or they get mixed up with the Hill of Calvary. Uh, where Christ was crucified, allegedly, and, uh, or, yeah, anyway, they, they have trouble with Calverly, and it's, it's like the, the town of Calverly in the UK. Now, I believe that either the town got named after us, or, or we got named after the town, I'm not sure. I guess I have to turn it here to get the last ones. And there we go, the last one. Yeah, uh, apparently the the Calverleys, from what my grandfather told me, Grandfather Calverly, he he said that uh, we were kind of notorious. Now I don't know if we were good notorious or bad notorious. I think it was bad notorious. I'm glad we changed. So we've changed, have we? I wonder which way. <laughs> I guess that depends on who you ask. Okay, we have a problem, folks, and I think probably most of you know what it is, and that is that in yesterday's episode, I had said, I don't see any reason why we can't spray tomorrow. Well, it's tomorrow, and it is so obvious that it took a lot longer to do everything than, than I thought. And uh, like right now, for instance, I'm looking down at this one, I'm noticing the one tread is not bent quite enough, so i I got to stop what I'm doing here and just give it a little bit of a tweak. Because the way the light is shining out, I can, I can see that it's not right. Okay, it looks better to me now. Anyway, yeah, um, it, it, it's almost as though if I say tomorrow we paint, you can almost be... Uh, guaranteed, <clears throat> oops, we can almost be guaranteed that, that we're not going to be able to. Um, and I want to be able to do it right. You know, I want to be able to take that uh, that thinner, and uh, Tony recommended, where is it here? Yeah, T Tony had recommended we thin it down 50-50, and, and, and Nigel had said 50-50, or as much as 70%. Uh, in other words, 70-30. I, I don't know if I want to go that that steep, but may, maybe we'll uh, sort of split the difference and go 60-40. Go, uh, uh, but that's going to have to be tomorrow, because I want to be able to take my time. And uh, As I mentioned to a comment in Scott, to Scott the, in one of his episodes this morning, by the way, Scott's got a new, uh, a new episode up uh, on, on his uh, build on the hood. And I said something to the effect of, if, if it's not fun, you know, like, uh, may as well give it up if it's not fun. 
So I want to keep this fun. I don't want to have to rush. Once I once I start rushing and want to mix this up and maybe make a mistake and then I got all uptight, the fun is gone. So I want to keep the fun in this. <laughs> so thanks for watching and all being well. We'll see you tomorrow.